called, I went, my sister is amazing. She's like, yeah, I'll drive you. It was her birthday. So I'm like, I'm sorry to ruin. And she's like, no, this is amazing. <laughs> <Nice> <laughs> birthday present. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, let's yes. do it. So she, and she said it was one of the hardest things in the world to leave me. And I was like, no, bye. Like, yes, I, this is I, it. I yeah. And it was interesting because someone said to me the other day, I said, I, I woke up there and immediately it was like the weight of the world was gone. It was so true. Right. I'm like, well, I can breathe. Yes. <laughs> I, like why you almost feel like you're in a different body. And so that 30 seconds of fear and that drive there, like no part of me second guessed it. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm exactly, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So that was amazing. And someone asked me, they said, oh, it sounds like you found your people there. And I was like, to be, I, I said, yes. I realized I'm like, I felt like I found myself. Yes. Oh. That's, I, I came home and I was like, oh my gosh. So I stayed there, I think for five days. They, in two days, they were like, Haley, you, you, you can go. Cause I was so <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so and, how long was it from the car accident until uh, going to detox? A little, a little bit over a year, Got which it. is, like, yeah. And I, I don't even really remember how long I was in recover, like recovering from the injury. Those are details I should probably figure out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I had this whole mindset shift. And even when I was there, when I was going to be going home, I'm like, okay, you know, like alcohol is legal. It's accessible. You can get it anywhere. And I was like, I don't care. And then I was like, this person's still going to be drinking. These people are still going to be doing drugs. You know, you're still going to get upset by stuff. And I was like, but I don't care. I don't have to drink. Like, and I had this huge realization that I had absolutely no idea who I was anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. I had very similar ones like yeah, using and, and drinking and drugs becomes the only thing that we enjoy doing yeah. the only hobby, yeah. the only pastime, the only interests that we have. So it's like, we yeah. totally lose ourselves. And I had as a 33 year old man had no idea the first thing about myself. I didn't yeah. know what my favorite color was, what my favorite meal was, what I yeah. wanted to do with, you know, nothing about myself. hundred percent. And I, and I realized, a, I mean, I think it's pretty common that we're, a lot of us are people pleasers. Yeah. I realized I never went, I never, when it came to like dating or anything, I never went for people I liked. I tried to get people to like me mm. and then I would that that was my thing. I was all about external validation. I was all about being who somebody wanted me to be as opposed to being myself and thinking I'm enough. So then all of a sudden you get sober and you're like, who the F am I? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. this is alarming. But I, and again, I don't know where my mindset shift came from, but I was like, this is effing awesome because even though I don't know who I am, I get to build myself into who I want to be. So, so out with the old, okay, cool. Don't know who I am. Let's rediscover. And I poured myself into like self-help books, like Jen Sincero, you're a badass. Yeah. Rachel Hollis, like all the stuff that was like, reminded me, Hey, you're you, you're valuable. You're worthy. You're like, my identity had become my struggle mm. and that. I didn't want that anymore. And that wasn't my identity anymore. That's very relatable. I bet a lot yeah. of listeners feel that. I definitely felt that to a degree as well. I think it just became part of my personality. It's, it's yeah. you know, Nate's the party guy. And then, right. oh, Nate's like going through a bout of depression because for a long time, I associated everything with depression as opposed yeah. to, well, I, I mean, I was feeding myself liquid depressant. So what did I expect from that? But yeah, yeah it, it becomes almost this personality trait, right? Yeah. Which is so scary. Yeah. So I had this year of amazing, like loved it. So happy. Poured myself into self-help books. Didn't, I was exercising. I wasn't interested in alcohol. Like it just and I had said forever, the idea of forever didn't scare me because I knew fundamentally like my life is better without it. I don't need it. There's no positive benefit that has ever obviously come out with it. Never. Still waiting on that. If anyone has a positive <laughs> outcome but, from alcohol, let us know. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested <laughs> Still <to> waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still waiting. So, but then sure enough, around 11 months, 
be, you know, I don't know if it was a voice in my head or other people like, well, are you, so it's almost a year. Like, are you going to drink again? You've, you're, you've been fine. You haven't even been interested in it. And I'm like, you know what? I haven't. And I haven't had a trait. Like I haven't had a trigger, which I don't usually typically use the word trigger because I'm yeah. like, uh, yeah, to me, I'm like, that's just something that we haven't developed a coping skill or mechanism for. And there's fading effects bias. And the thing for me is I didn't forget how bad it was. I, there's no way I could forget a brain injury and addiction and right. how horrible it was and what it did to my mom. Like it was very much in my mind, but after a year of feeling real good and not thinking about it, like pff, I can do it because I want to, not because I need to. <clears throat> right. Oh, I those can, intrusive yeah. thoughts. Yeah, and like, it'll be different this time. I can control it. I cannot control it. We're here to tell you, it will (laughs) not be different. And you cannot control it. Thank you. It's going to be the same thing. But maybe, hey, maybe it could even be worse. So let's just not. Yeah, Haley Scherter is here to tell you. (laughs) Goodness. Yeah, so, okay, let's, you know what? Let's try it, which... The funny thing is you learn in this naked mind about how, like, when you actually think back, did you, do you even like the taste of alcohol? Most people no. when you think to, right. so sure enough, I, I try, I try a drink. I'm like, yeah, for the, I'll be fine. And I was like, if I have a cider, cause I didn't, a cider wasn't my thing. I'm like, that's like a beer. Beer's not my thing. It'd be fine. It tasted awful, <laughs> but immediately my eyes shifted over to the liquor cabinet and I was like, oh there I go. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, so there, so that was a terrible idea. Mm. And then that took seven months of daily drinking and shame spiral. And the worst was in my head. I'm like, you just did it for a year. You loved it. You can do it. What yeah. the hell's wrong with you? And I'm like, well, that's not helping me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to beat myself up. So it took seven months. I screwed up a job, which I ended up going back to and they I didn't get paid for work but they let me stay and continue to help and created a structure and accountability for me because they love and support me and I friggin they're like the that's amazing that. yeah that like, is amazing unreal love a supportive unreal. employer with the normalcy now of uh mental health disorders and, and addiction yeah. and substance use disorders I think one of our biggest fears, right, can be, or why we perhaps stay silent or don't seek treatment is because of work. And, you know, will they be understanding? Can I get time off? Will my job still be there? Gosh, love a supportive employer. Oh, yeah. And there's so much fear of judgment, right? Like, and I, oh, yeah, outwardly was visibly intoxicated. Like, I messed up. That's on me. And they, yeah, like, nope, you're good. Still to this day, I, and that was hard. I went back there last year. Amazing, went amazing. But the anxiety going into something where I'm like, oh my God, the last time I was here, it was years ago, it was really bad. And it was like this full circle, amazing, incredible journey. But yeah, so, you know, I can look at it and be like, oh, why did you drink again? Oh my gosh. And I'm like, you know what? I'm so glad I did it a year after and realized like, okay, that's- For real, for real this time. (laughs) For real, for real, the door is closed, people. Yeah. Sometimes but, it takes that. Like, can I can yeah. I control it? Yeah. You know, with what I've learned and, you know, where I've grown and developed, is it going to be different? And some people need to go out and do a little more research and test it for themselves. Thank God it was only seven months and yeah. you got your answer, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. And it was interesting. I talked to someone and they said, we we're talking about moderation. And he was like, well, why did you, he asked me why I chose to drink again. And I was like, well, because I believed I could. Yeah. He's like, he said, there's a belief. And I'm like, yes, I believed <laughs> I could drink one. Yeah. And he's like, no. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, you believe there was, there was a belief. You either, you felt like you were missing something or you believe there'd be a positive benefit. He said, you just said to me that you had the best year of your life. You were happy. You were grateful. You felt like yourself again. So there was a belief associated with having that. What what made you do it? And I was like, I thought I could. And he's like, there's something else. And I was like, I don't think so. (laughs) Weeks later, laying in my bed, I was like, damn it. I was like, he might've been onto something. And I was like, 
I didn't want to be the girl who couldn't or shouldn't drink. Mm -hmm. Even though, meanwhile, now that I look back, I'm like, okay, so basically alcohol is having a total cigarette moment. There's nothing good <laughs> about it. And yeah. like, that's all coming to the forefront. I'm like, it's crazy that we fight so hard to be able to have one or two of something that doesn't bring any positives out or into our lives. But once I established that, like those were the stories and beliefs, I was like, yeah, no. When I found this naked mind, just that's, I found the alcohol experiment. It's a free, the free 30 day alcohol yeah. experiment online. And I was like, you know, what I let's just see. And everything that it was talking about, it was discussing like the science. And so like when we talked about, you know, oh, I tried to have just one and that didn't work. Now I understand our, my brain and the different things that happen and having that understanding, it honestly also just, it helps me understand myself, but it helps me talk to people who don't necessarily get it. What does that entail or what does that process look like to yeah. become certified? Yeah. So it was a six month program and then a certification pro, uh, process with a test and they would, you video record your coaching, but it's also like daily homework, daily meetings. So you're learning about the neurological and psychological components of alcohol use and basically the process of coaching, because a lot of us, I mean, you go through it and you can relate and, you know, story tell with people, but it's about allowing people to discover their beliefs and then peel back those layers. And I think honestly, the beautiful part of the dialogue within the recovery community is that as you're able to talk vulnerably and share without fear, you come to so many realizations without even oh. thinking that you're doing work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And there's something to be said just about that trust level too, oh, when, when yeah. it's coming from someone who has shared true life experience. You know, yeah. if you're sitting in a clinician's office or a yeah. sterile therapist's uh, <laughs> office. It's very different than someone totally. who gets it, you know? Oh my gosh, a hundred percent. And that's, I think that's like, oh man, I am passionate about it, but it's having that space with someone and that dialogue. And then I don't know for me to like sit and be able to have these kind of conversations is like my heart just opens. Like love I, it. yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm all about little small goals and little small habit change as opposed to being like, I'm not going to drink for X, Y, like however long, yeah. because the second that if, if you have a slip or if something happens, you get so discouraged or defeated and then you're all the way back. Whereas if you can just start to make small mm. tweaks. Yeah. I mean, the small steps get you, get you up the staircase as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember. There's the way home is a movie with Ben Affleck. He's a basketball coach. The way home. He has a drinking problem in the movie. And he is a basketball coach. And he's like, it's the little things. You just got to keep doing the little things. Yeah. And that will change the big picture. And I was like, yes, Ben, it will. That's Ben and Affleck, it, it will. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, Ben, you get this. Because <laughs> he he's totally awesome. gets it. Yes. He, I'm like, I love yes. that. <laughs> but <laughs> it really is those little things. Yeah. And and I think a lot of the times I'll talk to people, they'll say things without even realizing the limiting belief. Mm. And then I'll, and then I'll say it back and be like, do you hear what you just said? And, and right. then what are you making that mean? And it's just, I don't know. It's just like peeling back so many layers and I, I love it. <laughs> can we tell everyone where they can find you online if they want to reach out or possibly work with you? Okay. So you can find me at livingovertheinfluence.com. And then I also have Instagram at livingovertheinfluence. <gasps> And I just branched onto TikTok, which is uh, Oh, it's scary, isn't it? I, I, I'm a longtime lurker and yeah. recent kind of getting in more so to, I post a lot of clips from my shows, but I, I've yeah. started to uh, get a little, uh, you know, post a little more personalized stuff on TikTok, but it's scary, man. They can be it's, mean over there on TikTok. That's and that's my thing. That's why I'm like, I wasn't even sure if I was going to say it. Now I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Only because Let's I'm like- Put it out there. And that's one of the things that I'm exploring. And I talked about it yesterday. And I'm like, if energetically, I find that it's not right for me because I'm all about putting out my truth and I will never say what does and does not work. It's recovery is not one size fits all. Right. But I know that, yeah, it's it, I am a little nervous over there 
So if I do decide that like, Hey, I'm too sensitive for this because I am, I am a sensitive yeah, person. Same. I, yeah. Like I know I, I know I have to develop thick skin and, you know, put it out there and, and our, my message will not fit everyone and that's totally yeah. okay, but I'm trying it on. It doesn't mean I have to stick with it, Yeah. but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to da- dabble. If not, it. meet her over on Instagram. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if not Instagram or head over to the website and email me. Absolutely. Yeah. Healy Shirters. Wow. What a great conversation. I'm so grateful that we crossed paths. Uh, My new friend, Healy Shirters. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much. This is great. Thank you so much for listening today, friends. Hopefully you heard something that resonates with you. And if we help just one person, our job is done. Make sure you check today's show notes for all the information discussed in the episode and how to connect with our guests. And as always, check us out at thesobrietydiaries.com, youtube.com slash Nate Kelly, and on Instagram at the Sobriety Diaries Pod. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show, friends. It truly helps other people to find the show, and in turn, we can help more people. Until next Wednesday, try your best not to drink and be good to yourselves. Bye, everyone.